The International Shadow Project is not an act of civil disobedience. It's a peaceful project to remember Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It, uh, we're, not, we're not wanting to upset people. We're not looking at the issue of Pearl Harbor or World War II and saying that that shouldn't happen at all. We're looking at the actual act of dropping nuclear bombs on, on anybody. It started in 1982 with Alan Gusso, who's an artist in New York City, who saw a book that had some shadows on it of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And those shadows were those that are permanently etched into the sidewalk after victims who were standing close to ground zero were basically superimposed on the sidewalk and their shadows still remain. He had about 200 people out on the street at night with no one knowing about it, putting their shadows on the sidewalk with a liquid chalk that would, would rub off. Portland, Oregon, the pan chapter there, which stands for Performing Artists for Nuclear Disarmament, did the same project back in 1983. Again, 200 people on the sidewalk, 2,000 shadows. Those two cities got together and thought, because of the 40th anniversary, which is coming up tomorrow, of the Hiroshima bombing, that they wanted to expand it and have it worldwide. And in the last year and a half, they've managed to confirm 310 cities right across the world who will be on the streets tonight painting the shadows. The recipe that was concocted in New York and that was uh, sent up to us to be used had all these superfluous ingredients in it that just made it more made it stick there and stay there longer and the city would not like that very much. So I went through the recipe, took out all the things we didn't need, and ended up with calcium carbonate, which is limestone, and water. That's basically it. It's mixed about half and half, just a bit more water so that it'll fill 330 buckets that we have here. This stuff is incredibly water soluble. As soon as water hits it, the image dissolves and starts to move its way down the street into the gutter. It'll take a while for it to completely disappear though, so the street will have this nice ghostly haze over it for quite a while. This is our city of Toronto permit, right there. And although Richard said it wasn't that easy to get, it wasn't hard to get the city of Toronto's approval, but it took us about three weeks talking to at least 60 insurance agents who most of them laughed. The city has given us until the 20th of August for Mother Nature to take it away, and if Mother Nature hasn't done it by then, we do. It could trigger off a human element. This is what we're trying to do, is bring the human element into it, of, of life and of death. Everyone has to die at some point, but people don't have to go this way. It's going even better than I thought. If everything works out, I have this horrible thing though that, that my calculations are off and we're going to end up with either more than we need or not enough, but we'll see. We can only tell it as time goes on. project is great because it's dealing with images and I think the amount of people who are excited by it prove that if you remove the political dialogues that separate everyone you can get a large group of people together working in a creative way for peace. Those people who have come by themselves uh, we would like you to go out in teams of at least three people uh, mostly for safety's sake. Um, if you have come by yourself and uh, are looking for people to go with, you can form teams here. That yeah, everyone at least has to look at it. You know, and it will basically be seen by, you know, just by all of the city. So it's great exposure. How do you think people will feel seeing these shadows tomorrow morning? You know, it's it just the idea of nuclear arms just seems to be so detached from everyone's way of life. I think just waking up in the morning and be confronted with thousands of these things will at least make them you know, make it a little bit more realistic. Uh, you'll always have the type of just ignore it, but uh, hopefully it'll open up a few people's eyes. Two phone numbers. The phone number for this depot, uh, if you need to contact us for anything, and a phone number that you can get in touch with a lawyer if it's 
uh, necessary, and we really don't expect it to be. Is it, is it of you or? Oh no, it's not of me. Oh, you're, you're not, you're not pregnant. Not really pregnant. <laughs> Why did you choose to do a shadow of a pregnant woman? Well, it represents life. Um, I don't want to really make a, a, a statement about women that they're made for pregnancy or anything like that or for reproduction, but it's 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 obviously a good statement about life, and that's what it's all about. How do you think you'll feel seeing your own shadow laying on the ground? Spooky lying here. I hope that it's uh, it's never a reality for any of us. How do you think you'll feel when you see your own shadow on the ground there? Maybe a bit depressed. Yeah, where she did the speak of the image. Well, I can't stay up that late, so I did this shadow instead. Is uh, an American consulate in Toronto on University Avenue. Uh, I don't know if there's a Soviet one. I don't think. No? Um, yes, do the American consulate by all means, but just the uh, sidewalk outside. The only way that it will stop it tonight is if it rains very, very hard. Uh, if it's just showering, then the stuff will go down. If it's rained and stopped, we can put the, the paint on the wet pavement and it will stay. The final thing is breakfast. We have, uh, we initially tried to find a restaurant that would uh, provide breakfast for us for a small charge. Nobody is willing to do it except for a lot of money. So we have had to do the next best thing, and we have phoned Franz at College and Young and Franz at St. Clair and Young and told them that to expect people. The purpose of the breakfast is just if people want to go with your teams to go and talk about what you saw. I mean, you're going to see some strange things. You're out late at night, and there's a lot of you, you know. <laughs> people were out doing it easily in Toronto. And I think the most exciting thing is listening to stories of people from their experience about being on the street. I know when I was doing it, I got a cab driver pulled up and jumped out and said, what's going on? You know, he was driving all over town all night. He couldn't get away from it. Because really, I mean, just driving from where we were to here, 
uh, it's everywhere. It's all over the place. And there were quite a few people too who just, you know, as they would drive by, they'd just say, "Yay, you're doing something good." You know, it was nice. I think we really had three negative comments. Somebody said you're messing the sidewalks. Somebody said nuke Russia. Yeah. Uh, I think we should and the company said this restaurant should be blown up. <laughs> so did you paint any shadows of your little baby? We did lots of shadows of the baby. We did more of the baby than anything else. We put lots of them outside the daycare. We thought that was a pretty good idea. I have little baby shadows outside of daycare. Why did you come out tonight to paint your shadows? Because I'm concerned about what might happen to my to the world. We were down uh, in on Bay Street in the sort of financial district. There were a lot of police around, so they stopped us quite a few times. But um, they just asked us questions and said, "What are you doing? And do you have permission?" And we showed them our permit, and then they let us go on our way. So the hookers on Jarvis Street were really uh, it's the first time they'd ever heard of Hiroshima or anything like that. They were really interested. It was really quite strange. It's something different, and it's something very visual, and people will notice it for sure. Yeah, you can't it, miss what's on it's the street. public art. I'm doing a, a course in art therapy, and this is the largest group art therapy project I've ever seen. <laughs> we're just fucking tired. <laughs> and along with those concert tickets, I also have admission for two to the Rockland County Fair that day. Admission to all rides, food tickets to make a day of it. Be my 10th caller right now on prize phone, 212-955-9WHN, so you've got them. Meantime, the amazing River Nation's third-rate romance, Old oh, Red Rendezvous, 1050 WHN. giant lions yeah and it's supposed to be quieter there than it is here yeah. there were just six cops and a dog heading this way yeah right yeah we just seen walk by you guys getting accomplished what you wanted to get done or we probably put down 200 shadows already yeah. that's not enough though eh? but uh, uh, cabs are coming by saying that they see it all over town so which is great right we're doing yeah. it that's beautiful okay This morning it is quiet, no problems at this time. There was an accident earlier at the Lakeshore in Carlaw, but downtown the traffic volume is still light. At 12 and a half minutes now, after 7 o'clock, I'm Joe Cote. This is Metro Morning. <laughs> Good Tuesday morning to you from CBC Radio's Metro Morning. In this second hour of the show, shadows of the past, Hiroshima memories painted on our sidewalks this morning. Several sidewalks in downtown Toronto are covered with some unusual artwork this morning. During the night, about 500 anti-nuclear demonstrators paid tribute to the victims of Hiroshima and Nagasaki with paintbrushes. All these markings on the street today? No, I just wondered. I just come back on vacation. You come back from vacation? Have you got any reaction to seeing all these 
shadows on the street? I saw them at the uh, museum as well. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you don't have any idea what they're about? No, no. Oh, Matt. What's your reaction to seeing all these markings on the street, these shadows? Oh, uh, I don't know. Personally, it's been a long, long time, right? I don't really care one way or another. All I know is the superintendent's going to be pissed off. <laughs> you don't think, or you don't have any concerns about nuclear annihilation or anything like that? It's crossed my mind, but so is being hit by a car, <laughs> right? I'm not really fussy one way or another. I would prefer being hit by a car because then I just go by myself. Uh, and all over the state as well. Well, they should keep on painting. Great. <laughs> Thank you very much. Excuse me, sir. What's your reaction to seeing these shadows in the morning? Do you see it as a, as a good sign that people well, are Well, I don't, I don't know how much this will help because they've had so many accidents, so many wars, so many, so much cruelty is going on. The thing seems to get worse. Nobody learns from this. Nobody learns. So do you have any hope at all that maybe well, at one time we will learn? I hope so. Maybe I'm we can sure. learn from, from what I'm happened sure. in Hiroshima? <laughs> you, don't, you don't have too much faith in that. I might, I might not. It's difficult to say. From the behavior of, of mankind these days, Oh, my main reaction would be, why don't they try and remember Pearl Harbor too? Because yeah. a lot happened there. No one wants to remember that either. These never make any kind of an impression on me. Uh, to me, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the best thing that could have happened was the bomb on, on Hiroshima uh, for this generation, the people that are living today, because now they have proof of what could actually happen. <laughs> do something. This project has shown that the peace movement is a lot bigger than we ever thought it was. That I think that public opinion, especially with all the good media, is, is finally changing. That people are becoming more uh, and more aware and possibly will start taking steps to, to doing something positive, like just even making shadows. It didn't look much like me on the ground, actually. No. no, it didn't look exactly as I thought it would, as I would, dead. But.